Mazza blaring out with Eric Blair Show at the 2018 Hall of Heavy Metal History Award Show. Here with Metal Mike Classic. You played right. on all the Halford records. Uh, yeah, I did all the tours and every single record. My favorite Halford album is the live album. The Life Insurrection? You shred, man. I heard a lot of friends and bands telling me they got a lot of hangovers to that record because it's got a great vibe the album was like how records used to be yeah you got inside the album a pleasure to be honest when halford went out he did judas priest fight and halford you covered the judas priest in the fight stuff incredible yes well i i think it was important for the band to pay correct homage to the to the songs that people love and and as a fan I love to hear. I don't. I don't. I don't love. I don't like to see a guitar player go up and wink on a solo. Like, you don't. You don't paint over a Mona Lisa in my eyes, right? Yeah. You don't always have to reproduce it, but you have to know what the painting is. So, and I think it calls you more as a musician to be able to reproduce work versus always be like, this is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a different type of skill set. So, and we also wanted to make Rob proud. So what was the attitude in the band when you realized that Halford was going to be turning to the Mighty Priest? Well, you know, um, it was twofold. It was like, a, in my heart, it was 50-50 because I love Rob and I want Rob to be happy as an artist, as a person. And I know how much Priest means to Rob. So that part of me, of course, I wanted him to follow his heart, you know, that's, that's bigger than the music. Mm -hmm. um, but on the other side, you know, I, I felt like I was losing uh, a, a family member, you know, because I love Rob, but uh, that, that is the metal fate. And overall, Rob being happy is more important than um, making a record. What did you learn from working with Rob Halford? That heavy metal is a, is a working men's music sometimes. And, um, and, they, and it's something that brings you back to your working roots. It doesn't mean that anybody that listens to heavy metal is a blue collar worker, because that's not true uh, necessarily for everybody. But Rob always instilled a, a work ethic that was not in a way that was very, you know, no pun intended, crap the whip and get to work. It was like being in the presence of the metal god. You knew what was need to be done. So it was the silence, the silent power that Rob possesses, which is the ultimate power, I think, for somebody. Um, and, and I learned a lot. It's hard to say what, what you can be, but um, um, very privileged. You had to audition for Rob, correct? Yes. Now, how, what was your confidence level like going into that audition? Well, um, when uh, I, a quick story is that there was a, a very small thing on the internet and Rob was just coming out of the record with Trent Reznor the two voyeurs record right v John 5 with John 5 1999 internet just starting to, 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 to crack open and I found an ad saying guitarists needed for touring and and I wrote a letter to Rob and I said Rob I'm not sure if you're doing metal, but if you're doing metal only, I am your guy. And I signed it. And that m tape, I've ha I had a lot of self-finance records. I would spend all my money and make my own records. I sent all that in and, and that thing sat with the pile of tapes, of CDs. You know, and then through all of it, I mean, the, the God's hands was in it, and they looked at my tape, and I got a call from Rob's management. They said, uh, this is so-and-so from Rob Halford's office, and I didn't believe him, because they knew how much metal means to me. So I thought people were, crack, you know, pulling my leg. But um, it turned out to be true, and um, I came out to Los Angeles. And, and Rob knew I could play guitar, so it wasn't about, can I play the song, but can we hang out as people? Different level. Yeah. Uh, almost from that day later on, we sold out Madison Square Garden with Maiden. Twelve months later, and now you know my life's changed. You know, I'm, I, um, I've been able to uh, to live the dream to, in, in the fullest extent of everything, really. What does that dream look like to you right now? Well, my dream is um, that I could say what I what I set out to do as a kid uh, that wanted guitar, that I've been able to come over to United States and join the band and, and, and sell records that, you know, were in the millions and I've re reached people, right? And, and 
he allowed me to to really say that I didn't have to get a computer job or, or this and that. Not like there's nothing wrong with it, but I followed my own heart and I did it, and I achieved success both personal and external through following what I wanted to do. And I think that's very important because as as a kid, when you go through school, being your own person is not a is not a is not a cool thing. You know what I mean? It's probably now more than ever than before. So so that was me in, in a circle. And now I'm I'm slow, I don't want to say I'm going outside the circle, but I'm beginning to look outside of it. And I, and I decided to to teach younger players to carry the torch for the next generations. Right. So I'm no longer always in the middle of it. I also look on the other side, and I have a um, academy called Metal Heroes Academy, where I have camps with people flying in from all over the United States and I teach them heavy metal, we do concerts for their parents and I, and I set them up, you know, to carry the torch. Do you ever feel in competition with any of these kids? No, no, it's, it's not a competition that... It, it generally makes me happy when I see somebody become good, you know? And um, I see a lot of kids come in and I, one every so often comes in with the fire that I have. And you could tell. It's like it's gloves are off, there's no plan B, they're, they're on it. You know? Um, I love that. Are you also teaching these kids, like you said, it's not just being able to play, it's about getting along with people. That is a big part of it. Oh yeah. The way I teach, I said, music is, music is bigger than the notes on the guitar. You know, it's the notes are, are, are there to express things, but you, I, I teach them how to how to connect on a, on, a, on a deeper level versus just being a guitar shredder. Like, what is a shredder? Yeah. It's like, are we, I always tell them, are you there to impress the audience? Or are you there to connect with the audience and really give them something that they feel? Because people will follow you when they believe in your cause or they feel what you're doing. Well, that's one of the things that I liked about your guitar performance with the Halford albums was that you had a lot of feel, like Randy Rhodes. Mm -hmm. I can't say it's an even European thing because I always grew up with a lot of melody in Poland as a kid on TV, on the radio. Um, but um, I never, I never played music, even though I could play well technically. It's never been my calling card. It's never been Mike the Shred guy. It's always been the guy who could play fast, but I always wanted to connect with players, you know. That's why guys, you know, like George Lynch and Vito Brada will always be remembered. Mm -hmm. They shredded, yeah. but they were connecting hard. And a lot of the guys who were just like million per hour, you know, these days, how are you going to compete with fast guitarists? I mean, every guy, every day on YouTube, there's a guy who's faster yeah. and there's more strings, and the guys are having 18 string guitars now. And I'm like, I'm like, you know what? Go that way, <laughs> and not just hang here with a whammy bar and, yeah. and, and talk, you know. <laughs> and I always tell my students that there's a big, very big difference between being impressive in your room, on your bed, and with a camera. And when you plug into two Marshall stacks, when they actually move air so your legs hurt, and you're projecting to the guy that's 150 feet away from you, will they understand that? And the guy that far away, if you want to play in a band that projects that far into the audience, has have songs, they can't, they can't distinguish whether you're playing six tuplets or, or 18 finger tapping. It just sounds like one note to them. So you have to understand what kind of player are you going to be. Are you going to be a player that's going to be impressing people on YouTube? Or are you going to be the guy who's going to be filling the arenas and reaching the people? That's the difference. What's next for Metal Mike? Well, um, what I'm going to do, I put a, I put a band together just under the, uh, under the moniker Metal Mike. And um, I have a lot of uh, my, my own self-release records on my, on my label, but I also play a lot of the Halford material now. Um, I feel that, that fans ask a lot about it, no one's really playing it, and of course I don't play everything. Um, I love Rob, but I love to just celebrate it. Yeah, you know? and Rob's cool with that? Yeah, you know, Metal God never will tell me, you know, don't do something. It's a very interesting relationship. Rob's a little older to me, but to, to me he's almost like the statesman of metal. You know, for me, when you play with your heart and you're true, I think I think Metal God supports it. Mike, it's been great talking Eric, to you. Thanks thank for being you on the Blaring much, Out with Eric Blair Show. The Blaring Out Show.